again, Mark here from Talking Bass. Today we're going to look at a classic slap line from the master of punk funk slap bass, Flea. Get Up and Jump is from the Red Hot Chili Peppers debut album way back in 1984 and is the perfect example of Flea's hard-hitting, punk-infused slap bass playing. It's fast, it features a ton of ghost notes and it's likely to rip your popping finger to shreds. Perfect! As always, the lesson material is all there over at the Talking Bass website, so just click the link in the card or in the info below, and you'll be able to play along to the backing tracks with the supplied tab. Also, please like the video, subscribe to the channel for weekly lessons, and leave me a comment below to tell me what other Chili Pepper bass lines you'd like to see covered here on the channel. I've already covered a bunch of them, which I'll link to in the description, but I'm always open to covering more Flea lines. Okay, so there are three main slap lines that Flea uses in this tune. They're all very similar, and we'll start with the first one that enters after the funky intro. So the line's 130 beats per minute, and it sounds like this. So we're in the key of G, pretty much working around a G7 tonality, but with those minor thirds thrown in for good measure. And we'd start on a G here at the third fret of the E string. So this is all slapped and popped, obviously. So we slap that E, third fret of the E string, played for an eighth note. The rest of it's all 16th note. So we've got eighth note. Then we pop the octave of that G at the fifth fret of the D string. Okay, so that's your first move. First and fourth fingers for the octave there. Slap and pop. Next, we move into consecutive 16th notes and we have some ghost notes to deal with. Now, there are a couple of ways to do this, but uh, I'll show you the first way that uh, is how Flea plays them. So, after that octave G, we bring the thumb round, we just hook it round to touch that E string so that we can get some ghost notes there. So when you slap that E string there with that thumb resting up against it, hey presto, ghost notes. So as soon as you hit that octave, bring that thumb round, we've got two 16th notes there, two ghost notes. So Then we just shift between the G, the B flat, and the G there, fifth fret D string, third fret on the G string, with two uh, ghost notes in between each time. Okay. Okay, so that's G, B flat, G. And um, when you fret the G um, after that first move, we can use the third finger instead of the fourth finger to fret it. So for fourth finger first time, but then after we've moved that thumb across, you can use the third finger. So it's just the third finger and first finger we're using there. After that second B flat, we just play one ghost note. Okay. Then we pop the B flat again and hammer on to the B natural. So it's third fret to the fourth fret on the G string, first finger to second finger. Then we finish up with an open E string leading us back into the beginning. So that open E string is pretty much an open string ghost note. It goes by so fast that you don't really hear it happening. And it could be that he was actually meaning to hit the, uh, you know, the ghost note again with the thumb, but because of the way this lands, you, you know, you can just hit that open string and just bring it back in, so. Okay, so as soon as you've hit that E, you're back in on that G and it starts all over again. And that's the riff. Now, as I mentioned, there are a couple of different ways you can play these ghost notes. And uh, this other way I'm about to show you is actually a cleaner, more efficient uh, way that's better for five string basses. So if you've got a five string, because obviously it will be hard to hook the thumb all the way around to the, uh, to the E string, this might be for you. So what you can do, is just use the the remaining fingers there, the second and the third finger, to lie against the um, against that E string, 
and just use the first and fourth fingers for all of the fretted notes. So we start with fourth, uh, first finger and fourth finger and then just use the first finger for the B flat on the top and then the fourth finger again for the G at the fifth fret of the D string. And you can see here I'm using the second finger and third finger to just rest up. On, the, on that E string. So obviously on a five string, you could do this, hold those fingers against the uh, E string, and you don't have to worry about hooking that thumb over. Okay. In the slapping hand, it's all just straightforward slap and pop. I'm using a more upward turned thumb and uh, the first finger for the pop, because, you know, that's how I play. But as you're probably aware, Flea plays with his thumb angled downwards with his second finger as the pop. He does that pretty much because he's got the uh, strap pretty low, so it kind of works out. But if you've got the strap a little higher, it's a little bit hard to do that. Either way, works fine, makes absolutely no difference. Uh, although the downturn thumb, like I say, is probably easier if you've got a low hanging strap. Now, I know this isn't necessarily a technique tip per se, but from a conviction, timing and feel perspective, I'd recommend hitting fairly firmly with the uh, slapping hand. Now, you don't have to go nuts and, you know, start whacking the strings as hard as you can. That's going to have the opposite effect. But to get that flea tone and feel, you really want to go at the riff with a lot of conviction. So, you know, you really want to get those pops in there, really slap in there and keep driving into the bass line, especially when you come back round at the end of each bar, because that's where you're likely to get some timing errors as you back off from the slap pop pattern. So, you know, when you come back down onto that E string, keep driving. Now, the one thing that I should probably warn you about is that you're probably going to hurt your popping finger if you're not used to these kind of fast popping lines. Popping the G string is probably going to be fine, but popping the D string is going to possibly result in occasional rubbing against that G string because you've got to pop that, uh, or literally pop that finger in between the two strings. At speed, with this constant in-out action, you're likely to get some chafing on the upside of the finger. So if you start getting some soreness or blisters, stop and wait for it to recover. As the finger heals, you'll develop a callus and then you can start practicing again. Maybe you'll get some more soreness, just rinse and repeat, you know, rest, recuperate, practice, rest, recuperate, practice. So, as I mentioned, the lesson material and tracks are all there over at Talking Bass. Just follow the link in the info below, and I've provided tracks at three speeds, 90, 110, and 130 beats per minute. However, don't go straight into using the tracks. Get the riff under your fingers first at a slow, slow tempo, as slow as you need to go, even if it's super slow, like... Just build up speed away from metronomes and tracks. You need to take the time in building up the coordination of the hands, and you don't want to, uh, the, you know, the pressure of uh, metronome forcing you into mistakes. Once you have the technique and notes down, just work up speed in your own time to your own time. Then you can try playing to the tracks, and you'll notice that even when you have the riff down at a fairly high tempo, away from them, the track is probably going to push you in ways that you didn't expect. So again, start at the low tempo first and then just build up. So here we are at 90 beats per minute. Now let's try 110 beats per minute. And finally, let's try full speed 130. Okay, now let's quickly run through the other two riffs. Everything is exactly the same from a technique perspective, we just changed some of the notes. So for riff number two, we have... And then for riff number three, we have... So for riff number two, we just replace the B flat up on the top with the F at the third fret of the D string. So we just go in between the G and the F there, fifth and third fret on the D string. 
okay? And then instead of the hammer on from the third fret to the fourth fret there, the B flat to the B natural, we have F to the G, third fret to the fifth fret. So it's all just those two frets there. Okay, then for riff number three, Same again, but this time we place an E there at the second fret of the D string in place of the second G. So we've got G, F, E, F. Fifth, third, second fret, third fret D string. So. And the same hammer on there from F to G, okay? Again, just as with riff number one, you want to start out as slow as you need to and then just gradually build up speed. So even if it's down here, just build up once you've got the muscle memory down which you you know you know exactly what you're playing and you've practiced it over and over again the speed will just come don't worry about that it's more about getting the technique down at a slow tempo okay so that's a little bit of flea slap for you remember i've covered quite a few flea lines here on the channel which i'll link to in the description below let me know in the comments what other chili pepper bass lines you'd like to see covered like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and i'll see you next week